Hello, everyone, and welcome to our very first episode of Armchair Art Critiques, the show where production value goes to find itself after graduating. Uh, I am your host, Joshua Jacobo. I am an artist, educator, activist, and entrepreneur. You probably know me as the founder of New Masters Academy, or as that guy you saw sleeping in a public men's room. In this show, I critique the artwork that you email in to submissions at armchairartcritiques.com. It doesn't matter if you're a total beginner or a seasoned professional. We are, all of us, always learning. So if you're interested in having your work critiqued, send it in. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about head construction. I've got a nice drawing here that was submitted by Alejandro, so thank you very much for sending that in. Uh, I'm going to start with what I think works well. So what I see here is that we've got construction lines for the features on the front of the head. Um, we've got one for the depth of the eyes, we've got one for the brow, and this line sort of tracks well with the different features going down. Similarly, we have the ear which is being hung off the side of the head, and it seems like you understand that the ear should go from the base of the nose to the top of the brow, and so if we put that in perspective like a box off to the side, what you're doing seems to track well. Same thing with the corner of the mouth roughly lining up with the angle of the mandible. So if I draw a little center line here, um, I do get a sense that there is depth to the front of the head. And as I've said, we've got the front plane stepping off to the side planes. Uh, there's even evidence that you understand that the basic construction of the neck is a cylinder. Um, so all of this is, is working really well, so good job on this. Uh, I think now we can move on to where I think uh, some problems are. So you might have heard that on average the eyes are one eye width across. But if I actually go ahead and, and map this out on your drawing, it seems like the far side eye is too far out. Uh, also, it looks like there's too much distance between the outer canthus, the outer corner of your near side eye, and the outer edge of the brow form. Another issue and a big one that I noticed here is that uh, the way that you have the philtrum, which is the division of the upper upper lip, fitting into the columella, which is the division between your nostrils, is not actually connected in the right place. So think about when you're bringing the nose down, think about where that has to fit in. Here's the nose from below to show that. Also, the mouth, generally speaking, lines up with the interpupillary distance, so the distance of the pupils if the eyes were facing forward. Here in your drawing though, I'm seeing that we're kind of far off from that, which would imply some kind of uh, prognathism, um, which is a abnormal swelling forward of the mandible or maxilla. So it's probably not what you intended, so I think we need to move, just move the mouth over, as you can see here. I'm going to go ahead, I think I know what reference you were looking at when you did this particular drawing, so I'm actually going to demonstrate, I'm going to, I'm going to actually demonstrate some of these construction ideas for you here. So even though we're keeping this really simple, and I'm using basically the same construction you are at this stage, um, I'm really trying to get it to look like the sitter, since this is uh, a portrait. So I, I'm at every stage, even at the simple stages, I'm really trying to not only make the construction work within itself based on the or based on what I know about anatomy, but also I'm trying to capture my particular model at every stage. So if this is done correctly, then even the roughed out constructed head without features should feel like the person you're drawing. So as you can see, I've done a lot of the same construction you've done. I've got a wedging form for the uh, for the brow that steps in, sort of like an awning. Um, I've got basic spheres that show me where my eyes are going to go. I'm using sort of a gold bar shaped wedge for the nose at this stage. Uh, the mouth is a bulging form, you know, which represents the the dental arch. When I'm moving into the eyes, I, I'm I'm really thinking of them three dimensionally, and so I've got a, a something like a sphere, although the eye is a bit squished in nature, but something like a sphere, and I've got to run the lids over that sphere in three-dimensional space. And even the iris, when I, 
when I hang the iris in there, the iris is going to have perspective because depending on where it is on that ball is going to influence how it looks. So here, you know, for the purposes of being clear for this video, I'm being very didactic. I'm, I'm, if this was on paper, uh, this stage would have to be really um, lightly drawn. But as you can see, even with the mouth, I'm thinking about the forms. I'm thinking about how the far side contrasts with the near side, how the lips wrap around, trying to really push that three-dimensional form. I'm not, the last thing you want to do is, is draw something like the features quickly. So right now I'm doing the nasal labial furrow. Um, I decided, I've done a visual measurement of the eyes and decided that they need to be brought in. Um, this model in particular uh, has sort of narrow set eyes, so you just gotta be aware of it. You wanna know where the average is and then, and then go from there. So now I've sort of um, ghosted down that layer and I am uh, further defining some of these features here. Those lines were sort of distracting, so I brought them down. And I'm starting to look at the rhythms that I'm getting. And so, you know, the hair is going to have rhythm, um, the features, the shadows. Um, everything should sort of tie, tie into everything else. So when it comes to the nose here, you know, we've got uh, the nostril faces down. Columella tucks in up underneath. Um, we've got the alar cartilages, which are creating this wedging shape above the wing of the nose. And uh, when it comes to the brows, I'm, I'm really thinking of how these eyebrows are laying on the three-dimensional forms underneath. So I'm certainly not just drawing them in, you know, with, with you know, like you might pencil in eyebrows. Um, further, I'm going in here and really thinking about the three-dimensional aspects of this mouth, you know, the upper lip, uh, this cupid's bow, it's got three forms. The lower lip has got two forms that are sort of uh, mashing together, and that comes from embryology. It comes from how our, how our mouths form. I'm starting to get a little more specific with the neck. You know, the neck, yes, it is a cylinder, most simply, but really we've got the, the larynx, we've got the throat, which is a sort of uh, rectangular kind of form that tucks into the pit of the neck. And we've also got the sternocleidomastoid muscles, which come from the mastoid process and down and connect to the sternum. We actually have three connections, three insertions. Now I'm taking some time to sort of break apart the light side from the shadow side. So I'm using a, a soft line here because I'm turning the form with a form shadow as opposed to a cast shadow, which would be sharper. And I'm using this opportunity to sort of start getting some values in there. You know, you could totally work it out, uh, get all your construction and your block in done and then, and then go in there and start dealing with light and shadow. Um, because it's digital and because uh, I can, I'm able to sort of jump between stages here. So I'm sort of working out the eye now a little bit more. Um, obviously, we're going to get more of a dark where the eyelashes are, um, trying to feel how the different forms around the eye, around that orbit, uh, relate. And I'm thinking of the skull at this stage, um, dropping it down in value a little bit. You'll see, I, I do sort of sneak up on it here. Now, a couple things about the planes of the nose, you know, in the cartilages, so the ball of the nose, the tip, you're going to have sharper plane changes. Whereas the wings of the nose, you know, the side of uh, outside of your nostrils is softer because that's fatty. So I try to, I'm trying to imply the differences between a sharp turn and a, and a, and a softer turn. Running some halftone in the light side, sort of turning the forms a little bit. I'm thinking about how the zygomatic bone, the cheekbone, runs along the side and dives back into the head at the point of the ear. Pulling some more darks in, you know, again with the hair, this is something I see people really rush on. You can treat a hair a lot of different ways, whether it's sculpture, painting, drawing, but I think you really need to think about the structure of the hair. You know, don't just use lines that are going in a general direction. Try to give it some movement and give it some body and give it some uh, some three-dimensional depth. So here I'm sort of tuning up some of these forms, tuning up the nose. And I am, even even at this stage, I'm, I'm aware of where, the, where my darks are, um, where they are in my reference in this case, or, or where I, I want them to be. And so, I am blocking in the eye on the shadow side. Um, not sure how dark I'm gonna gonna take that. 
you'll notice that the shape of the opening of the eye is different on the far side eye because we're, you know she's looking off to one side but also we're just seeing the eyeball from a different direction the eyeball doesn't look the same from the lateral side the outside or the medial the inside or below or above it looks different from all different angles i hope it was useful to you to see some of this obviously you know it looks like you spent a few minutes on it it's sort of unfair that i'm <laughs> comparing you know a drawing where i spent you know I, i'm not sure this is been played back for me. I'm not sure how long it actually was, but you know, a long, a lot longer than five minutes. But what I want you to be sensitive to are the distances and the depths. It's one thing to say, okay, well, the the top plane turns into a side plane, but it's where is that? What is the angle of it? What is the character of that? A good work, you know. Keep at it, and I hope this was uh, helpful for you guys. Again, uh, that that's yeah, that's our first show. Uh, there are no refunds. If you'd like to have your work critiqued, go ahead and send it in. Again, the email address is submissions at armchairartcritiques.com. You can submit drawings, paintings, sculptures, or digital work. Um, the better the lighting is and the higher the resolution of the images that you submit, the more likely your work will get chosen. You can use your real name or an alias. Just give me something that I can, <laughs> something that I can call you. Keep in mind that the show is supposed to be educational uh, and entertaining, and that your critique is as much for you as it is for the other people watching. Anyway, I hope this was I hope this was useful for you guys. 